our topic for today is talking about the Victor sum. We will calculate the Victor sum using cosine and sine law analytical method. Take note, this is analytical. If you remember on our previous video in, in part 2, we calculate the, the Victor sum using polygon graphical method. So we use the protractor and the roller and we have the scale in order to to measure the the vectors and we we use the method of finding the vector sum in a polygon the tail tape tail tape combination now today let us find the vector sum this is using analytical method so therefore the drawing is not drawn to scale so therefore we don't need the protractor and ruler all we need is the calculator and our writing paper okay from the word cosine sine law method we will be using the principle of law of cosines and the law of sines so let us recall all those laws so take note that when we say oblique triangle it is a triangle that has no 90 degrees so therefore if we have this, tri this triangle, we have three sides and three angles. Suppose this is angle alpha, the opposite is A. And this is beta, angle beta, the opposite is B. And this is angle gamma, the opposite is C. So we have these three acute angles. Now we can still have the oblique triangle if we have one obtuse and two acute. So again, B, beta, opposite B, alpha, opposite A, gamma opposite C. So therefore, uh, these are the possible oblique triangles. So the question is, how to solve the triangle? Suppose given C, side C, given B, and given the alpha, angle alpha. So since we have already three givens, so therefore we can provide the solutions to the triangle. Now recall that if we have three givens, then we can provide a solution but if we have three angles we have infinite solutions so in this case the the triangle is unique it's because uh, that this is uh, case three of the oblique triangle this is two sides with one included angle so the question is how to calculate a for example you are asked to solve for a in that problem we need to use the principle of law cosines. Again, this is case traits because that we have two sides and one included angle. So if we are solving for A, we can use the law of cosines. According to the law, we squaring squaring A, then if we want to solve for A, you have to square it, then equate that to the square of B plus the square root of C minus twice the product of B and C cosine of the angle alpha. The angle is the included angle, angle between B and C. So therefore, this is the result. A square is equal to B square plus C square minus 2BC cosine alpha. So taking square root both sides, then we can solve for the value of A by simply substituting all those values for B, C, and the angle alpha. Take note, this is case 3. So therefore, this is the law of cosines. Now, if we wish to solve for the angle beta and the angle gamma, we can use the law of sines. What is law of sines? The law of sines says that the, the sine function of, the, of an angle is the opposite is equivalent to the sine of the angle of the other angle is to its opposite side also with the other the third angle sine function of that angle is to its opposite the ratio must be the same so this is the law of sines the sine of the angle alpha is to opposite a is equivalent to the sine of beta is to opposite b it is also equal to the sine of gamma is to opposite C. So therefore, again, this is the law of sines. Now, based on our given, these are circle letters. 
the, the B, C, and the alpha are given. So therefore, how can we calculate B? So all you need to do is to take note that B is given. So alpha is given, given the B, B and given C. So in other words, if you wish, and take note that A was already given because how calculated. So therefore, we can use it after using the law of science. Take note, in case 3, the first solution or the first formula to be used is the law of cosine because this is this is case 3 case 3 and case 4 case 4 the law of science case 1 and case 2 are are problems that we we use the law of science first law of science okay so again this is case 3 so therefore look at this one we can solve for beta considering this one because a so therefore to solve for beta since given the alpha, given the A, and given B, we can solve for beta by simpli simplification or simpli simplifying the equation. So then take the inverse. So therefore, the beta is the inverse sine of B sine alpha over A. Now, if you want to calculate gamma, so gamma, we can use this two, the sine A over A and the sine gamma over C. Take note that we have only one unknown because alpha and A given given C, so therefore we can solve for gamma. So the gamma is the inverse sine of the C sine alpha over A. So in other words, we are providing the solution of the oblique triangle of case 3, two sides and one included angle. So therefore, again, this is the lobe signs. Now, the question is how will we use this this equation okay now take note that we we if you remember in our previous we construct the polygon the close polygon the closing line is the the resultant so we calculate or we we solve the resultant using the the scale roller then we convert it in our conversion or scale and we measure the angle for the direction now in this case we will be using an optical method we will use the law of sines and law of cosines. So therefore, we will create triangle. If you notice, in a polygon, we can always cut several triangles. So we will divide the polygon into its triangle. Then we will solve it using the principle of law of sines and law of cosines. Okay. So, for example, we have an object. And this object was applied with force 1 in direction theta 1 and this is force 2 with an angle of beta and we have force 3 an angle of gamma so suppose you are asked to solve what is the resultant of these three forces or the vector sum in in cosine law and sine law method now all you need to do is to create the equivalent force polygon the closed polygon take note if you remember our previous we 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 constructed the polygon by the tail tape tail tape combination so we can still do it the same today but take note not necessary we have to draw draw it in a scale meaning this is drawn not to scale so therefore we can start at initial point constructing the, the victors in a in a polygon form but again drawn not to scale so therefore Construct the F1 with an angle theta, then uh, connect the connect the F2 at the tip of F1 with equal vectors, the magnitude and its direction. Then do it again. Connect the F3 at the tip of the of F2, then with correct magnitude and correct direction. So therefore, this is now these are now the connected. Uh, connected vectors but take note this is drawn not to scale so therefore all into this connect so connect the uh from starting towards the end because this will be our resultant but again remember we will compute this one we we will not use our scale to measure the resultant so the question is how to calculate the resultant of these three vectors using 
cosine and sine law method. Now, take note, this is a kind of four-sided polygon. So, the question is, where are the triangles? Okay? Now, all you need to do, you have to start at the starting point. Then, connect it in the at the tip of the second force connected. So, if we connect a line from the starting point towards the end of the second vector, then therefore, we can see that this is the this is the resultant of these two forces. This is a vector sum actually. Okay? So, therefore, we have this triangle and we have another triangle. So, all we have to do is to Use this triangle. Now take note that this side is given as if 1 and this side is if 2. Now take note this is theta. If this is theta, so therefore this must be theta. Since this is beta, so this total angle must be theta plus beta. In other words, this angle is already given. This is known. No? And take note this is beta. Why? Because this is beta. And the magnitude of if1 and if2 will serve as the sides of the triangle. Okay? So, we have three givens. So, all we need to do is to solve this, to solve this side. So, meaning we will solve this side using this two. Because take note, this is the resultant of the two vectors. The vector sum of the two vectors. Okay? So, Meaning, we have to consider this is triangle. Okay? Then, using this one, this is, take note, this is case 3 because we have two sides and we have the included angle. So, this is SAS. Two sides and included angle. So, we can always solve to the side opposite to that included angle. So, we can calculate this one. Okay? We can calculate by squaring it. Then the sum of the squares of the two sides minus twice the product of the two sides and the cosine of the angle, which is the included angle. Then take the square root in order to solve for the f naught. So therefore, the magnitude of this vector is can be calculated using the, the givens. Okay. Now take note that we need the what? We need the direction of this. Okay. So we have we can calculate this one. We can calculate this angle. Why? We need this angle because we 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 will uh, provide the direction of this f. Okay. Or we need this angle. We need this angle. So therefore, if if you want to know this angle, we should know this angle also. So the question is how 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 much is this angle? So therefore, we need to solve this one because after solving this. This is take note a straight line, 180 degrees, subtracted by this one and this one and this angle gamma, then the remaining angle is this angle. We need this angle later. So therefore, we are required to solve this angle. So how? How is we will apply the law of sines? Okay, take note that if not or the magnitude beside is the law of cosines, but the angle and can be computed using the law of sine. So therefore, take note law of sines. The sine of A, look at this one. The sine of the alpha is to A is the same as the sine of beta is to B and the sine of gamma is to C. Look at our triangle. Our triangle, we want to solve this one. We want to solve this one. So we, we need at least two opposite side given. So if you notice, this is already given. And we are already calculated this one. So this the sign of this is the opposite are already given. So therefore we will utilize this angle and its opposite side. So take the sign of this. So therefore the sign of this angle is the opposite. The opposite is if one is equivalent to the sign of this angle is to the opposite side, which was already calculated. So do it. The sine of this angle is to F1, okay, this is opposite, is equivalent to the sine of this angle, theta plus beta, is to F0, 
If not, it's already, it's already calculated. So therefore, the only unknown is this angle. So you have to uh, solve it in terms of the other. So therefore, we are taking the inverse sign of that. Then we can calculate. Another important requirement is we, we should know how much is this angle. Again, be, because we want to know the direction. Take note, this is the direction. So we will calculate this one and we will calculate also this angle so that we can solve for this magnitude. Okay, so we have we solve the uh, first triangle and after that we have to move to another triangle. Okay, so again, al alpha lambda can be calculated by what? The sine of lambda is the opposite of 2 and and we will still use this one. The sign of this is to its opposite because we, uh, because these are given, these are known, so therefore we can calculate the lambda. So therefore, take the inverse again, the inverse sign, then we can provide the value of these two angles. Okay, so then move to the next triangle. We are now on the way to work on this triangle. Both sides are, if not already calculated, if 3 given and this is unknown so we are to solve for the resultant so in order to come up with two sides and one included angle because we will be using the cosine law we need this angle so therefore take note now that we can now calculate this once because that this is known cal already calculated this is also get this given so therefore very easy to solve for the Omega. The omega is 180 degrees because a straight angle is 180 subtracted by beta. By this angle, the angle uh, the, the the gamma, then the answer is the omega. So therefore, we have now the triangle with two sides given and one included angle. So in, in that in that process, we can solve for the resultant, which is the opposite to this included angle. So again, let's use the law of Cosines. So, what is log cosines? Take note that given, given, given. So, this is such two sides with one included angle. So, therefore, square this one. Very easy to memorize. Square this one. Then, take the sum of the squares of the two sides. So, square this one, square this one. Then, subtract it by twice the product of this two. Twice the product of this two. Then, take cosine of this included angle okay so therefore we can solve for the resultant magnitude so do it so therefore r is the square root of if not square plus if 3 square minus twice the product of the two then cosine the angle omega so therefore r can be calculated what about the direction this this uh, uh, p lowercase of p with this is the direction of the resultant so we need this angle so again utilize again this triangle so this this angle okay using the law of sine so kappa let this be equal to kappa so sine of kappa is the opposite if 3 then take the sine of this because this is already uh, calculated so the, the omega sine omega is to is to the resultant so therefore the only unknown is kappa so you can calculate it by taking the inverse sign so therefore kappa can was already calculated so since uh this was already calculated this one is calculated and this is no unknown so therefore use the 180 degrees 180 degrees minus subtracted by theta by lambda by kappa the answer is the direction of the resultant so therefore these are the solutions of the uh, of the cosine law method. Okay, so uh, kindly correct this one. This is not polygon method. This is law of science. This is not graphical. So kindly correct. This is not graphical. This is uh, analytical method using cosine and sine law method. Okay. So, okay. So in order to understand again, we will provide numbers of the problem. So, this is very familiar problem. This is the same problem we solved in our video number 
number 2 the polygon method so we are given if one 100 gram force in the direction of 30 degrees northern part of west and if 2 is 150 gram force in the direction of 50 degrees northern part of west and the third force we have the 120 gram force in the direction of 12 degrees southern part of this okay we are asked to solve or to calculate the vector sum but this time using cosine and sine law method okay so what will be our starting solution now in our in our polygon method recall that we use the scale okay then convert it but this time we don't need the scale we don't need to convert all we need is to construct the polygon of this vector so we will start at uh, almost the same in the polygon method but the difference is we do it drawn not to scale so we will decide the point starting point for our 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 uh, polygon so we will construct the polygon of vectors but this is drawn not to scale so this will be our starting point so we will connect or we will construct any of these forces okay so let us say we will connect the f1 which is the 100 gram force in the direction of 30 degrees this is the northern part of west northern part of west 30 degrees so therefore no need to measure again just approximate that 100 is always less than 150 so therefore next is to construct the cartesian again draw not to scale we have to connect the 150 again 150 is greater than 100 so more or less you have to construct a, long, a bit longer compared to the 100 so see it 50 so remember that this is 90 degrees so if you say 50 it should be more than a half of the 100 and the 90 degrees is 45 so therefore uh, take note that if this is 50 this should be 40 so do not to scale but you have to estimate estimate more or less close to real value okay then uh, another Cartesian so that we can connect can connect the F3 take note this is 12 degrees southern part of S so therefore this is located at the third quadrant so connect it by the way this is 50 why because this is 50 so therefore the 12 degrees again is coming from the horizontal axis or the s west axis and the magnitude is 120 this is 120 gram force drawn not to scale okay these are the vectors connected not necessarily be drawn to scale so therefore we have to connect a line from starting towards the end because this is our resultant okay we will solve this resultant using the triangulation method or using the law of sines and law of cosines triangulation because we will cut this polygon into triangles by the way if there are more forces then you have to connect it connect un until the last force then again the the closing line will be our resultant so uh, therefore if we have since this if we have three forces we have two triangles the number of forces minus one are the number of triangles that can be cut within that polygon so therefore we you are you will be working with the triangle starting from the first the first triangle to to do it or to solve is the triangle coming from the starting point towards the second force so therefore we need to connect a line but before that Take note that this is 50 and this is 50, 30 and this is also 30. So therefore, this is 80 degrees. Okay, we need this because this is the included angle. Okay, so connect the line and assign this as if not. It's like what we did before, but the difference is we have already the numbers. Okay, so again, first is we will work on this triangle one at a time starting at this point then next the next if, if we have multiple forces okay so where are the givens the givens are two sides 100 and we have the 150 gram force our angle is 80 
This is the included angle. So this is case 3. Two sides and included angle. So therefore, we can provide the solution of, or we can solve for the side if not. The if, if not is the line connecting from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. And we form the triangle again. An oblique triangle. So use the uh, formula for the log cosines. Where is the log cosine? Here. A square. Okay. So in order to solve this one, very simple. Square this. Then take the sum of the square of the two sides. Subtract that product of the two sides. Then multiply it with the cosine of the angle, which is the included angle. Then take the square root. Okay. So therefore, these are the results. So the square root of squaring this one 100, squaring this 150, then minus twice the first and second, twice the first and second, then take the cosine of 30 plus 50 equals 80. So therefore, use your calculator and the answer to the calculator says that it is 165.2 gram force. This is the magnitude of the no, not magnitude resultant. Magnitude of the the resultant of the two vectors only. Okay? Not yet the answer. Okay. So again, we need this angle. Why? Because we want this angle. Okay? For the next move. And also, we also need this angle. So, how to calculate the angles of this triangle? Then, we use the law of sines. Okay, use the law of sines. Now, the strategy of using the law of sines, find the known values of the angles and its opposite. Now, in this case, known angle 80 degrees and its opposite. This is, was already calculated by 165.2. So, we can utilize this too. So, all you need to do is to take sine of this, okay, is to opposite, and this must be equal to the sine of this angle is to the opposite, if not, the 180 or the 80, the sine of 80 is the opposite, is the same as the sine of this angle is to its opposite 100. So therefore, calculate the value and the result is 36.6 degrees. So therefore, this must be 36.6 degrees. So if this is 36.6 degrees, then we can now solve this one because this is again 180 degrees but uh, we will do it later now we need we still need this angle okay assign this as lambda okay use the law of size or there is another way to solve this one uh, take note that the total angle in a triangle is 180 degrees so if this is 180 degrees this is 80 and this is 36 Point six, then the result will be this angle. But the uh, be careful because if this is wrong, this will be affected. Okay, so I think it's good to use the lobe signs. After that, the result of this is to sum up the three, then check if it is 180 or very close to 180. Because with doing that, you are verifying the credibility of your answer. So again, I advise to use the lobe signs again. The sine of the alpha lambda is to its opposite, which is 150 degree, uh, 150 gram force, should be equal to the sine of the 80 or the 30 plus 50 is to opposite, which is equal to, if not, or the value of 165.2 gram force. So the only unknown is the lambda. So simplifying and solve for that lambda, take the inverse sign, then therefore the answer is 63.4 degrees. So, where is 64.4 degrees? This is the angle between the uh, first one to the uh, line that connects from first one to first two. Okay. So, therefore, we already solved the first triangle. The next is to move to the next triangle. So, we already... So, R again was... Uh, if not, is 162.2. While this one is 36.6 and this one is 63.4. Okay, so we reflect all the values here so that we can easily uh, find if we need it. So then, 
we already saw the first triangle then all we need to do is to move to another triangle okay that's the process starting from the initial point the triangle then move to the next until we end up with the side which is the resultant okay so again we have only 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 two triangles because we have three sides three sides minus one equals the number of triangles meaning for a five uh, numbers of vectors if we have five vectors minus one there are four triangles that can be formed and the four triangles should be solved before going to solve the result so minimum you will be starting at the still uh, triangle that connects from the first to the second then second to the third then third to the fourth so all line should be coming from the starting point should be coming from the starting point always okay so therefore uh, now take note that we have this side this is already given 165.2 and the other side is 150 the only lacking here is this angle because we want to solve the resultant so again we already uh, uh, projected this angle okay but the reason why we solve this one because we want this angle so therefore assign that as uh, omega okay if this is omega then we can solve the omega because again this is 180 degrees the straight angle so 180 minus 50 minus 36.6 minus 12 the remaining angle is for the omega so therefore the answer says that it is 81.4 degrees okay so therefore we have now we are now forming the sas the two sides and included angle omega and this angle is 81.4 take note 81.4 so these are known so mean we can solve for r using what the law of sines so what is law of sines a law of sines the square of the side is equivalent to the sum of the squares of the remaining sides minus twice the product of this side times cosine of the angle included then take the square root and you are solving for r okay so therefore this is not the result squaring the 165.2 square the 120 uh 120 add, add that to the square of the first so then twice the first and second so twice the first and second then cosine of the included angle that's it very easy then use your calculator and the answer is 189.11 gram force this is what the magnitude of the resultant this is part of our answer but take note resultant is a vector okay magnitude is not enough we still need the we still need the direction okay so the question is how much is the value of the direction or what is the angle from this axis going to the line of the resultant okay to answer is we need this one we need this angle okay so how to solve this angle again this angle is part of this part of this triangle so therefore we can solve this one using law of signs again so after solving this one then again this is 180 this is 180 subtracted by this angle this one this one then we are solving the direction now reminders that in this case we use the 180 degrees but there are some cases that uh, it is not always the same 180 minus the angles it depends upon the uh, direction of your sides now in this kind of we are forming polygon there are cases that the lines will will intersect to the sides so careful no careful of using your geometry it's purely geometry okay so log signs what would you do utilize the opposites known so again this is already known as 81.4 and this is this was already calculated by 189.11 gram force so therefore we will utilize ratio so in order to solve this angle see kappa okay take the sign of kappa is the opposite 
opposite is 120. And the, this must be equivalent to the sine of omega is to its opposite r. So then, this is the result. The only unknown is kappa. So solve it. And the answer says that it is 83.86 degrees. So therefore, again, solving for P, uh, this is equivalent to 180, okay, 180 minus 30, minus 36.4, and minus kappa, but kappa is 38.86 degrees. Calculate, then we have 47.74 degrees. This is the direction of the resultant. Okay. Now, this is to announce that if your, if your solution, if your calculus is correct, we are providing the exact value. This is the exact value. Okay? Why exact? Because we use the theoretical idea. Now, we compare this solution to our previous, the polygon method graphical. There are two sources of error. The error are coming from the instrument. We call it instrument error. And we have the human error. Okay? So, if you are using a dull pencil of constructing the polygon, you are creating error. Okay? So, these results will be accurate. Result provided that, you're, that you are calculating it correctly. So, when we compare this result, compared to our previous video, in, in, in video number 2, using the polygon method, okay, I have here the clip or slide that. So, this is the uh, result of our polygon method. Our resultant is 176 gram force. Look at our our analytical method using cosine law. We have 189.11. So, which one will be will be the accepted value? This is the accepted value because this is theory. And this is through uh, the instruments we use okay so actually the difference uh, we can see this is not significantly difference depending on our tolerance okay but take note that this result is based only on the graphics result of my of my screen but you might have a, a, a good result of this depending on your drawing area now look at also the direction the direction of our graphical is 36 degrees 36 degrees while the theory or the law of cosines, we have 47.73. So, we cannot compare this to again because this is just for, for instruction purposes, the result. You might have a good result on your actual verification to this problem. Okay? So, uh, if you are to choose which one is very important method, so, see it, analytical method. Okay? So, the, do you think that this method, the, the, the law of cosine and sine is always applicable to all forces? Pain resultant? The answer is, maybe. But, take note that we have only three forces and we have two triangles. What if, what if your first triangle, first triangle calculated results are wrong? So therefore, your wrong result will be carried out to the second triangle and then, so therefore you will arrive a wrong answer. So if there are multiple, there are multiple forces, then we have also a multiple uh, triangle to solve. So, the degree of chance of having error is increasing for increasing number of pores. So the question is, is it applicable to use the law of cosines and sines for several forces? The answer is no. It is not advisable to use this. Okay? All we need to do is to use the law of the component method and that will be our next video. So, See you in the fourth video. Thank you.